Okay, with last week being Warblade Wolverine, you can kind of tell the next week would make sense to end up going with uh, Psyblade and Psylocke. So as long as I do this through my nine criteria, it's intelligence, findability, strength, speed, durability, invulnerability, energy projection, versatility, and x-factor. So, Psylocke, born Elizabeth Braddock, no recruiter is Betsy Braddock. For a while she was a British model who flew an airplane, who became Captain Britain for a little while. And then I believe it was shortly after an incident with Wasi was a siege perilous. She then came back as an Asian ninja who still had a British accent. We ended up being a body swap with I wanna say she was an assassin. But it in order to do the body swap, it required Mojo and Spiral and the range of the Mandarin to become the ninja body. And then the ninja body came back as Revenchi, so you had the Kowan and Revenchi, well actually, you had Betsy Braddock, Revenchi, and then you had Kowanin, Psylocke. But the Elizabeth Braddock body was dying of the legacy virus. So, Psylocke went from being telepathic model to awesome ninja with telepathy, can create a telekinetic katanas, because she used to be able to do telepathic knives, now it's telepathic, now it's tele telekinetic katanas. Then she died, came back through the power of the Crimson Dawn, which allowed her to mildly teleport and gave her some shadow abilities. So she's run the gamut of things that happen in the Marvel Universe. On the other side, you end up having Psyblade. So you need, now you have, now you have Metahuman, Cybernetics, who throws essentially electromagnetic blades. I think it's 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit, I think that's the number it is, or it's 5,000 degrees Celsius, is one of the two. So you've got essentially a telepathic, telekinetic ninja versus almost the exact same sort of character, just instead of being that, you've got somebody who is a, a metahuman cyborg. So we'll get right into this. Intelligence. I'm giving this one to Cyblade because she actually was the leader of her team, Cyberforce, for quite some time. Also, some of her telekinetic and you know, some of her robotic enhancements do actually enhance her overall mental capabilities. Findability. Man, this one's going to Psylocke. The people that Psylocke has fought, and she's considered to be one of the most dangerous characters in the Marvel Universe. You know, she held her own against a severely ticked off Wolverine. Like, full on Berserker Rage Wolverine. And was able to do a pretty good job holding her own. She's fought just armies of ninjas at a time. She's a tremendously skilled uh, combat artist. Strength. You're probably thinking this is going to go to the cyborg. No, this is actually going to go to Psylocke. They've actually mentioned that she can use her uh, telekinesis to give herself superhuman levels of strength. So you're looking at, you know, above, above peak human to the cybernetics versus someone who is easily in the lower levels of superhuman strength. Speed. Yeah, again, she's using her, her telekinesis to give her, again, such a superhuman level of speed. Because yeah. she's using that virtually nonstop. It's a tremendous amount of telekinetic abilities. Durability. Now we're looking at how well can they actually recover. Well, this one's going go to the, go to side blade. The cybernetic enhancements do actually allow her to regenerate from wounds at a much faster rate. And she's going to get, she's not going to get tired. Because she's not 100% just regular flesh. She's not going to get that much lactic acid. So she's going to have some of the cybernetics to help keep her moving. Help keep her grooving. Uh, now we're in vulnerability. Well, yeah. Um, Psylocke isn't one for wearing any sort of armor at all. Unless she's used Lady Mandarin. Um, versus somebody who is metal and is known to wear a level of armor. So you've got somebody who actually has metal armor, pretty much grabbed it under her skin. 
and below most of her, most of her outer layer of skin, you actually do have robotics underneath. So the cybernetic enhancements are going to allow her to take a much more tremendous level of beating. Now we're at energy projection. You know, you're probably thinking, I've got awesome telekinesis on one side, versus just a flat out tremendous amount of heat that she can generate, and at really, really great range. You know, beyond the fact that what she's throwing is super hot, and also is electric as well. So she's got this tremendous ability to pretty much like milk holes through cars, easily, like with very, very little effort. Versus someone who's going to be able to throw things through telekinesis, and it's going to be hard for her to try to TK block something that she's going to throw from side blade. Now we're going to have versatility. I'm, I'm giving this one to Psylocke, because you've got the telepathy, you've got the telekinesis, and all the power that those entail. You also have a light amount of invisibility using shadows and light teleportation abilities. So now it comes down to X Factor. What is that one thing? Because we're all nice and tied up. What is that one thing that's going to definitely give one of them the edge over the other? I'm actually going to give this to, to Psylocke. And the main reason why is she's got a tremendous amount more development to her. And some of the fights that she's been involved with, and the individual that she has taken down, is just tremendous. You know, she is somebody who's gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with people like Wolverine. She's done a pretty good job, more often than not, against Sabretooth. So she's taking on some of the, the top-tier individuals when it comes to how dangerous they can be from a physical sense. Yeah, that also kind of means someone like Sideblade, who's going to be tough to knock down, is someone that she will be able to defeat. 